1984 is truly emerging, isn't it? Uh, the NSA spying on us, the IRS targeting political groups. It's, it's out of control. Now we have Obama ordering federal workers to spy on each other. I mean, you can't make this stuff up. Obama orders federal workers to spy on each other. Watch their lifestyles, attitudes, and behaviors. Okay, let's see what this is about. Under this program, which is being implemented with little public attention, of course, security investigations can be launched when government employees showing indicators of insider threat behavior are reported by co-workers according to previously undisclosed administration documents obtained by uh, investigators. Also, this can be triggered when suspicious user behavior is detected by computer network monitoring and reported to insider threat personnel. Federal employees and contractors are asked to pay particular attention to the lifestyles, attitudes, and behaviors like financial troubles, odd working hours, or unexplained travel of co-workers as a way to predict whether they might do harm to the United States. Uh, it's this minority report type situation, you know, pre-crime. They're trying to stop these leaks. Why don't you tr stop the corruption? Why don't you stop all the lying? Why don't you investigate Benghazi? Why don't we get to the bottom of Fast and Furious? Why don't we expose the connection between the CIA and the, all the drug trafficking coming into this country? Gary Webb, murdered. Danny Casolaro, murdered. The INSLAW program, which utilized the way, the mechanism from INSLAW and PROMIS, the PROMIS software, ladies and gentlemen, gave the NSA the ability to do what they're doing to us right now. Some serious, foul things are happening in this country. And they've been happening for a long time, ladies and gentlemen. This goes far back. Department of Justice officials were involved in a criminal conspiracy to force Inflaw, a small computer company, out of business. Hello, I'm Tamara DeMonte. And I'm John White. There are new developments tonight in a year-long News Channel 3 investigation. The Riverside County Sheriff's Department is looking into possible connections between a triple murder back in 1981 and a murder-suicide in 2005 that claimed six lives. It's a story you will only see right here on News Channel 3 at 11. The reporter, Nathan Baca. John Tamer, we have internal documents from the cold case division of the Riverside County Sheriff's Department showing the depth of the investigation. We will not reveal the investigator's identity at this time since the documents show their lives may be in danger. Now we are learning the murders may be a cover-up for one of the federal government's most secret computer programs. Promise is the name of one of the government's most secret computer database programs. Computer programmer Michael Riconosciuto wrote in this affidavit that major modifications to the program were made here in Indio. On July 1st, 1981, Fred Alvarez, his girlfriend Patty Castro, and friend Ralph Boger were shot to death here on Bob Hope Drive in Rancho Mirage. There was a house here that has since been bulldozed. Nobody was ever arrested for the shooting. Family friends say Cabazon Band of Mission Indians Vice Chairman Fred Alvarez was going to blow the whistle on this. Documents from the early 1980s showing a business partnership between defense contractor Wackenhut Services and Cabazon manager John Philip Nichols to form Cabazon Arms. One of their alleged projects was the Promise Computer Program. Database and pattern recognition software was a new source of information and power in the early 1980s. It starts when the program's designers, Inslaw Corporation, accused the U.S. Justice Department of stealing the software for their own foreign policy purposes. This programmer testified he altered the program to create what's called a back door to allow government spying. This happened while working on Cabazon Indian sovereign land. Well, the parties that were involved in the uh, distribution of this software uh, were involved in covert operations, and they were involved in uh, uh, Nicaragua and Central America, and they were involved in uh, operations in the Middle East. This U.S. Justice Department memo from 1985 shows the Promise software was being sold to Middle Eastern arms dealers and wanted no paperwork or customs inspections to interfere. Even unsolved mysteries got on the case when the last journalist to investigate this spy scandal was found dead in his hotel room. Danny Casolero's wrists were slashed in 1991. It was ruled a suicide. But his reporter notes disappeared, and the book on the conspiracy he was to title Indio was never finished. Congressional hearings were held in 1992. It describes the committee's investigation 
into serious allegations that high-level Department of Justice officials were involved in a criminal conspiracy to force Inslaw, a small computer company, out of business. The hearings ended inconclusively. The Promise software was allegedly altered on tribal land in India with a lack of federal oversight. And just like Microsoft Windows, the database program kept up with the times, upgraded several times over the years. But Promise came back to haunt America in ways never imagined. Oh, a disturbing indication that Robert Hansen, the FBI man accused of spying for the Russians in what officials said at the time of his arrest was a massive security breach, ended up helping Osama bin Laden. First of all, Osama bin Laden was a government creation, created by the CIA, whose moniker was Tim Osman. Okay? Um, Ted Gunderson, COINTELPRO Kingpin, sold Osama bin Laden's Stinger missiles in 1979. He was created by Zbigniew Brzezinski from the Council on Foreign Relations put together as a opposition mujahideen against the Afghani, excuse me, against the Soviets in the Afghani war. That's the truth. This all comes together, though. The pieces of this puzzle are starting to, to form. You can start to see the picture, I hope. It's all really a secret government that operates outside of the law with doing horrible things. And the promise connection is very important because of the intelligence, necess the necessities of uh, surveilling the American people. And what's going on with us right now has a lot to do with what happened uh, in the past. And promise is a big part of it. As correspondent Carl Cameron reports, Hansen sold the Russians an extremely sensitive piece of U.S. technology. And the indications are that they, in turn, sold it to bin Laden's al-Qaeda terrorist network. From an office in India to foreign capitals all over the world, several murder investigations are connected to this spy scandal. Whether answers can still be found 27 years later remains in the hands of the sheriff's cold case squad. Promise, or a derivative of Promise, was bought by Australia to be used in our intelligence and law enforcement Absolutely, agencies. Absolutely, uh, because I, I uh, uh, spent uh, several thousand man hours of uh, programming time with a programming team, uh, you know, developing that subset. This unlikely looking character is a computer genius. His name is Michael Riconosciuto, and he says he was in charge of modifying the Promise program so that it could be accessed by American intelligence. So whoever was holding that master key could do what? Basically uh, break into it and spy. ASIO says it doesn't have and has never had the Promise software. Of course, it won't go into any detail about what sort of computer programs it does have, which is very handy because, according to Michael Riconosciuto, the Promise software was often altered and given different names before it was sold. Indeed, Riconosciuto claims he specifically modified the program for Australia. In a federal court hearing, Judge well, George so Basin I ruled the Justice Department had used illegal and works. underhanded methods to bankrupt Bill Hamilton's Inslaw company. He ordered the government to pay Inslaw $8 million. Yeah. Trickery, fraud and deceit. You use those words when describing how the Justice Department stole the software. Do you stand by those words? Yes. I, there's no question in my mind about it. Uh, the evidence was overwhelming. About an hour and a half outside Washington, D.C., you'll find this place, Earl Bryan's multi-million dollar country estate. If you believe Michael Riconosciuto, it's the house Promise bought. Now, we'd like to bring you Earl Bryan personally denying that claim, but he's not being interviewed by anybody. All we got was this letter from his lawyers, threatening action if we so much as associate Earl Bryan's name with this story. He had the contacts to help make sure that certain elements in Iran would not make a deal with President Carter in 1980 so that President Carter could not recover in the polls and that Reagan would win the election. I, Ronald Reagan, do solemnly swear that Just I five have minutes have after Ronald Reagan took the oath of office, Iran announced that the hostages would be released. Some 30 minutes ago, the planes bearing our prisoners left Iranian airspace and are now free. Promise Software Revolutionary Computer Program 
developed in the 1970s by a former NSA programmer and engineer, Bill Hamilton. In terms of computer programs, it represents the universal... Promise Software is a revolutionary computer program developed in the 1970s by a former NSA programmer and engineer, Bill Hamilton. In terms of computer programs, it represents the universal translator of Star Trek. PROMISE stands for Prosecutor's Management Information System. It is able to read and integrate any number of different computer programs or databases simultaneously, regardless of language or operating system. According to Bill Hamilton, the inventor, Edwin Meese, Reagan's Attorney General, along with Dr. Earl Bryan and others, stole the amazing software, modified it installing a trapdoor into that would allow those who knew of it to access the program and other computers, and then sold the software overseas to foreign intelligence agencies. Bill Hamilton knew his software had been stolen when requests for tech support came in from people he hadn't sold it to. The Israeli Mossad, under Rafi Eitan, again modified the software and sold it throughout the Middle East using British publishing magnate Robert Maxwell as a cutout. The revolutionary software allowed almost anyone with the trapdoor code to enter every database and every computer in every language at will simultaneously. The CIA through GE Aerospace in Herndon, Virginia, GAO contract number 82F624620, the FBI and the NSA modified the back door but more importantly had enhanced the ultimate program with artificial intelligence or AI. The program, which came to be called other names such as SMART, had originally been capable of automatically and secretly drawing any information from any computer and all computers connected to the Internet. The contractor that added the artificial intelligence component, GE Aerospace, was purchased by Martin Marietta, which merged with Lockheed Martin, the largest defense and aerospace contractor in the world. Ed Meese was not the only one who recognized the potential promise in promise. Democrats had their own moves. Jackson Stevens is a presidential kingmaker, a lifelong supporter of George Bush, and Annapolis roommate of Jimmy Carter. The billionaire Stevens' firm, Systematics, later Axicom, had mated the illegal software with banking software. In the late 70s and 80s, Systematics handled roughly 70% of all electronic banking systems in the U.S. Stevens teamed with Wortham Bank, Lippo Group, and BCCI, the Drug Intelligence Bank, to penetrate every banking system in the world. What better way to map and inventory the world's resources but by making each client pay, nation pay for it? Promise Software makes it possible to compile a worldwide database on every marketable natural resource. Artificial intelligence enhanced promise-based programs would be the perfect setup to make billions of dollars in profits by manipulating the futures trade in, for example, a rare metal like tungsten or exploiting a sudden surge in the price of gold and platinum. The Royal Canadian Mounted Police, RCMP, were sold promised software to use in their intelligence gathering operations and began to suspect that their copies may have been altered and possibly all of their files were transparent and had been so for some time. The RCMP had been given their version of promise by the Canadian Security and Intelligence Services, CSIS, which was created with the assistance and direction of the CIA. RCMP investigators stated that they and the CSIS had a rivalry similar to the one between the CIA and FBI, and questioned whether any intelligence agency created by the CIA could be completely loyal to its native country. They further stated that they knew that the NSA had compromised their communications equipment. The Canadians put out a report that friendly nations were stealing sensitive technology, particularly related to aerospace, biotechnology, chemicals, communications, information technology, mining and metallurgy, nuclear energy, oil and gas, and the environment. This information is incredibly important and it's true. Our government is involved in very, very devious activities. You are being lied to in a tremendous way. Everything is manipulated and controlled to keep you from caring about it, wanting to do anything about it, fighting back against it. And that's what I'm trying to do, is fight back against it. All the information you've just received is true, but I ask you, to find your own truth. There's only one truth. Seek and you'll find it.